Hey, I'm Mike Baccarella, and today we're going to take a look at a really cool Joe Diorio line that weaves its way inside and outside of the changes. Let's take a look. This line is a 2-5 in the key of B flat major 7, so we have a C minor 7, an F7, to a B flat major 7. The cool thing about this line is that Joe takes an idea and moves it down chromatically until he reaches a point of resolution. So let's take a look at what he's doing here. So over the C minor 7, he starts with this shape. Now you might recognize that as the top part of your basic pentatonic box shape. It's the top two strings. But if you look closer at that, we can see that we have, a, we have G at the 8th fret of the 2nd string, B flat at the 11th fret of the 2nd string, C at the 8th fret of the 1st string, and E flat at the 11th fret of the 1st string. And this gives us a C minor 7 arpeggio. This is the entire arpeggio. It's our 5th, flat 7, root, and flat 3rd. Let's take a slight detour there and see how we can explore this simple shape. So right here, like I said, this is a C minor 7 arpeggio. If we raise our 3rd, we get a C7 arpeggio. So I just took my E flat and raised the E natural. If I raise my seventh as well, I get a C major seven. So I raise my B flat to B and E flat to E, I have a major seven shape. And if I go back to the minor seven and then I lower the fifth, I have a minor seven flat five shape. Lowering the G to G flat. And the coolest thing about this particular shape on the first and second string is it repeats exactly as is on the third and fourth string and on the 5th and 6th string. So on this string set I can do minor 7, dominant 7, major 7, and minor 7 flat 5. Same thing down here. Minor 7, dominant 7, major 7, minor 7 flat 5. After Joe plays the C minor 7 arpeggio, he goes down a half step and plays a B minor 7 arpeggio. Same exact fingering and shape. Just on the 7th and 10th fret now, rather than the 8th and the 11th. So the C minor 7 portion of the line looks like this. So just moving down chromatically, and then jumps onto F, which lands us on our F7, and he starts the exact same shape there. So it goes F, A flat, B flat. He gets a C on the eighth fret with his third finger, D flat, C, F, A flat, and that takes us to G natural, which lands us on the B flat major seven. So the F7 portion looks like this, and here it looks like he's playing a B, a B flat minor seven. Or you could think of it as playing F minor, like F natural minor. Both are the same set of notes. How does that interact over F7? Well, we have our root, our sharp nine, our 11, our fifth, and our flat 13. So it has some tensions and some chord tones. So it's, it's not a bad choice playing F natural minor over F7. It gives us a couple cool sounds. Now in the B flat major seven portion, we land on G. And we go down to F sharp. We do that twice. So, so I'm playing that with my sec second and third finger here on the eighth and seventh fret of the second string. And then we go F natural and down to E natural and then two Fs. So we have. And then I pull off the E, E flat on the fourth fret, all this on the second string. And then C, C sharp, D, B flat on the third string. So fifth, sixth, seventh, and third frets on the third string. The B flat major seven portion looks like this. So it's almost like we're delaying the resolution. We're playing more F7 in a sense. And then we're enclosing the third down to the root of the B flat major seven. So that's, that's when we fully get to our resolution is in the second measure there. But this is a really cool line with a really cool concept of taking one idea and moving it down chromatically. And Joe does this a lot in his playing. He does this a ton. So here's the full line. So I've enjoyed taking a look at this great line. It's a cool concept and it's a, it's really cool for the ears because it does take you out and brings you right back in. So thanks for checking out today's lesson. Keep practicing. I'll see you next time.